Today I'm going to tell you about the story on how Sayaka Mizuno became my obsession. A while ago I made a video titled The Church of Mizuno. In a nutshell, I made this video where I showcased my obsession with a character from an anime called Danganronpa. I shared this obsession with the world by showing everything I had made of Sayaka Mizuno. From me making an army of cutouts of her in my living room, to me covering my entire upstairs with pictures of her, and even declaring my house a church for Mizuno in which I worshipped her, which in turn led to the video going viral. However, the biggest question people had was whether this was some form of joke, with them questioning whether it was satire. You know, at first I thought this was a joke, but if it still is a joke, they really put a lot of work into it. Therefore, today I'm going to answer this and discuss what started it all and why I made this video in the first place. It all began back in 2021. Well, one day while browsing TikTok, I came across a video that would change my life. The video in question depicted a guy showing how obsessed and down bad he was for the character Peak from Attack on Titan. Needless to say. <laughs> Watching this, though, gave me an idea. I would make a video similar to this, but with my favorite character, Sayaka Mizuno, which in turn would lead to my quote-unquote Mizuno obsession for the next two years. My motivation to make this video stemmed from me struggling to make videos gain traction, as it was early on when I started making content. And the way that I thought about it is that I had already made two giant cutouts of Sayaka that were 12 and 41 feet tall, respectively, so I wouldn't need to do much more work to make it seem like I was a crazy, anime-obsessed neckbeard as I already was, and had no bitch. But to ensure the video's success, I went the extra mile and added some goofy things. I put a Mizuno sticker on my drone, Amazon Echo, alongside changing my title on my LinkedIn profile to say that I worked at the Saika Mizuno Construction Company. By this point, I had worked on the video for about three months, and it was now time to post, and almost immediately after posting it, no one cared about the video. But then, three months later, I wake up to see I was tagged in a subreddit I'd never heard of called r slash cringe i have been posted to a subreddit which basically is meant to laugh at people for being cringe, and after checking, I realized the video had not only been posted there, but to multiple subreddits alongside TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, and soon it became my most viewed video at the time. Now, I was both happy and disappointed. Happy my efforts didn't go to waste, but also disappointed because it was being reposted without any lead back to me. But it was at this moment I realized how many people liked the Mizuno bit and the power of cringe. So I decided rather than scrapping it and take the loss, instead I would double down and make a sequel and do everything right this time. I'd add a watermark, I was going to make the video longer and higher budget, and this would be the beginning of me making The Church of Mizuno. The plan for the video was insane. To make it, I upgraded from having one printer to ten, which were also Mizuno themed of course. This was in order so I could do a huge to-do list for the video, which included making 300 Mizuno cutouts, a planned 120 foot tall cutout of Mizuno, a brand new do-it-yourself audience stand made out of cardboard. The entire upstairs of my house would be covered head to toe with pages of Mizuno and there would be at least 10 separate locations I would film at, alongside a bunch of other miscellaneous stuff. Needless to say, the video was going to be crazy, so I started working on the video, and then started posting updates to Reddit and other platforms as a series. As I found out, just posting the updates to making this video were getting more traction and views than many of the reposts of the original video. And after a while, memes and artwork started being made about it. This one was one of my favorites. It was a drawing made of Sayaka reacting to the Sayaka house. I later put that in my house because I wanted to make it even more meta. And it was at this point people just started calling me the Sayaka guy whenever I was recognized online or at IRL conventions. I was pretty grateful by the reception. I wasn't expecting any of this to happen, so it was quite a shocker from just having a small TikTok following. And from this point on, I was just really curious where this would lead me and continue down the path have to finish the sequel, which is when everything went wrong. Now, during this time, I had not only been making Mizuno stuff, but other things such as making Hull Live cutouts, YouTubers, streamers, and moved into a different place. And because of this, I put the Mizuno project on hiatus for a while with everything I had made for the video in the garage. So, one day, when I took these things out to work on them, I had a soul-crushing revelation. The giant 120-foot tall cutout of Mizuno had become wrinkled beyond repair, and all the cardboard bleachers had collapsed on themselves, making them useless, 
which I couldn't fix without having to remake it all. Two out of the three biggest parts of the video had become butchered. Only 60 life-size cutouts made it to the final video out of the 200 cutouts I had already made and the 300 I was planning, as they were going to stand on the bleachers and was pretty discouraged once I realized I wouldn't be able to get the shot I was looking for. And only one third of the giant cutout was finished, which was also wrinkled, forcing me to essentially scrap it all. If I release the video now, the video wasn't going to do well. Because of that, for a few months, I didn't work on the video, deciding if I should cancel it, but ultimately decided while what I had filmed was only a fraction of what the end product was going to be, it was still impressive enough to be used for the video. But in order to compensate, I was going to add a bunch of things that weren't planned, and by the end of it, I had so many Mizeno related things which were so different from one another, I didn't know how to connect it all to make a video that had a narrative which I thought was needed or else the video wasn't going to do well. When I was making all of this, I was just thinking of things that were funny to me and making them, so by the end I had to figure out how this would all fit together into some form of story. So I brainstormed and decided that the reason why I had all of these things is because I started a church for Mizuno. I got the idea from these types of subreddits that exist that thirst over anime characters. You got the Church of Tifa, the Church of Pyra, the Church of Chun-Li, etc. So when I was thinking of doing the same thing with Mizuno, I thought it would be funny if I turned it into an actual place. And now I had a reason for all the Mizuno stuff that I owned. The 60 choirs in my living room? Well, that would be the choir for the church. The pages on my wall would be like the paintings on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. The Mizuno army would be to prevent people from stealing holy artifacts from the church, and the giant cutouts I had made would be like giant monuments that I had built. I think the Mizuno video turned out a lot more creative and interesting because I had this narrative rather than I was just a crazy Saika Mizuno fan who had all of this weird stuff for no reason. But now it was time to finally post the video. By this point, it was pushing nearly two years since I set out to make the sequel, and I knew if I wasn't going to post it now, I was never going to. And thus I compiled every post I had made in the last two years and created the video. Everything had come down to this. The file name for the video was The Tsar Bamba of Cringe. And with that, I released the video on April 17th, 2023. And unlike last time, the shockwaves were instant. The video had been reposted across all social media, as well as being translated into different languages, which then led to streamers and YouTubers to make videos about it, to the point where it's featured in online news and being played on TV in some places, which got the attention of both the English voice actor and Japanese voice actor of Saika, alongside the creator of Danganronpa, which then snowballed into a cosplayer named Ayame Hime to come to the church and cosplay Saika in the Saika house. And then shortly thereafter, a 30-minute documentary being made about me and my art that had been in the works for a while. In total, the video was being spread rapidly on the internet for about a week. Every day I was waking up to something new. And when this all happened, I wasn't expecting this again. I was more prepared this time, but I didn't think it would do so well because of how badly I butchered the video. Overall, I think I didn't do well on making it clear that it was satire and was meant to shock people. It was my intention to make the line a little blurry on whether it was satire, as that's what made the first video do so well, but not to the extent where the majority of people were unsure. After the video it was crazy because I had a bunch of people asking whether I had started the church to evade taxes by establishing my house as a church, alongside a bunch of people asking whether the church was real. It then escalated even further when my personal information got leaked in order to find more answers about who I was, most notably when the secret about my dad had been shared. When this came out, it was like dropping a nuke on a force that was already on fire, and started being shared again, but additionally with this bit of trivia, which then led a few AI-generated articles to be made about me and my family. According to one of the articles, I started an origami YouTube channel at the age of 10 that now has 2 million subscribers. My source is that I made it the fuck up. But those few articles would quickly turn into many. That by the end of it, my dad's name was now Michael and was an engineer. Now I was an astrophysicist from Harvard University, as well as having degrees from MIT and Brown University. I was an Italian native and was quote unquote a fusion of diverse cultures with ties stretching from Pyongyang, North Korea 
and Somalia. So overall it was a train wreck, which is still going to this day with AI articles popping up here and there. I find it all really comical just because of how ridiculous it is, and I'm sure most people do as well. But in hindsight, I think because the line was more blurry than intended on whether it was real, it was kind of a positive as it made it do a lot better, which in turn led to a lot of opportunities and learned a lot through the whole experience. But that basically summarizes the entire Mizuno saga and my Mizuno arc. You may be thinking, was it all for views? And the answer to this is actually no. Because while it is probably true, I wouldn't have done any of this if people hadn't expressed any interest in my Mizuno antics. I really could have done this with any anime character that was more popular and had a larger community when I decided to make the sequel, and did someone or anything that I thought may have gone more viral. But I chose Mizuno, a character that basically no one knows of. The type of content that I like to make is the type that could have only possibly come from me. Content that has a lot of integrity towards what I want to make that's never been seen before because it's so uniquely me. But overall, I'm really happy I went down this path. To me, it was quite wholesome despite how shocking and strange what it was I was making. There was always a group of people that were supportive. What I realized from this is no matter how eccentric you are and how many people are going Going to make fun and ridicule you, there's probably a corner of the internet that will also appreciate you, no matter how niche or weird it is. But with the Mycino arc ending, all I want to say is I appreciate everyone who has shown interest, and I hope you stick around. But that will be all. Goodbye.